Number 32. Calcium propionate is sometimes added to bread to retard spoilage. Just means that it slows down the spoiling rate. This compound can be prepared by the reaction of calcium carbonate, which is CaCO3, with propionic acid, C2H5CO2H, which has properties similar to those of acetic acid. Write the balance equation for the formation of calcium propionate. Okay. So, it seems like we have to form calcium propionate from the reaction of calcium carbonate with propionic acid. So we know our two starting material, right? We know that the reaction has to be between calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and it reacts with, so plus, propionic acid. So C2H5CO2H. Okay, now let me just bring this a little bit over just so that we have a little bit more room. And I know that I'm going to make uh, my products. Now just know, right, I have two compounds here. We've been seeing that if you have two compounds on your reactant side, chances are you're going to have two compounds on your product side. We have to make them, right? One is going to be calcium propionate and then whatever the other one is. But now we just got to figure out what is what. Now actually, let me just bring this up a little bit just so that I have room down here to write. Okay. So we've been doing these reactions, right? Whenever we see that we have two compounds, this is, this is just a double displacement or a double replacement reaction. This just means that we're going to be swapping them. The outer ions go with the outers and the inner ion goes with the inner ion. So we basically just have to figure out what the two ions were here and, you know, mix them up and that way we'll get the two products. Okay. So. From memorizing polyatomics, right? Because memorizing polyatomics is going to be very, very, very helpful. Especially when they told you that it's calcium carbonate. Carbonate is a polyatomic. And carbonate is CO3. So the split or the ions that made calcium carbonate was calcium and carbonate, right? Now, you can use the subscripts to crisscross back up to tell you what the charges were. But this goes on the premise that you memorize either your, um, the trend on the periodic table or carbonates a uh, charge, right? I know that if CO3 is the polyatomic carbonate, I have one carbonate and one calcium. So if I use those subscripts, right, the one crisscrosses up telling me that I, and you know what, actually, before I do that, I'll just, just so that it doesn't get messy over here, I will just rewrite it down here. CaCO3, just to reiterate, the three is part of the polyatomic, so I have one carbonate and one calcium. This one crisscrosses up, telling me that uh, carbonate was a negative one, and this crisscrosses up, telling me that calcium was a positive one. So as of right now, it's telling me that calcium was a plus one and carbonate was a minus one. However, what's wrong here, guys, right? Calcium is in group two. It doesn't want to be a plus one charge. It wants to be a plus two charge. So this is just a simplified version. I have to multiply this by two to get a plus two for calcium. And whatever I do to that one, I got to do to this one, right? The negative one wasn't the right charge for carbonate. Carbonate is always a negative two. So now it kind of makes sense. This was just a simplified version. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit easier and just say that since we multiplied it, they're now plus 2 and a minus 2. Okay. Now comes this bad boy, right? C2H5CO2H. Where am I going to break this off, right? Well, they told us that it was an acid, so that kind of helps us out a little bit. Maybe I'll write the acid in red because acids are usually in red. And now it says that this acid, propionic acid, has very similar properties to acetic acid. Acetic acid, you may see it in so many ways, right? The two main ones is CH3, CO2H, or you may see it as CH3, COOH. They are exactly the same thing. 
But just know that when you made this compound, the break was, since it's an acid, the break is the rest of the compound with the acidic hydrogen. So you'll always break where that acidic hydrogen is. And remember, usually the hydrogen's in the front, but remember, chemistry, there's exceptions all over the place. So with these organic acids, your acidic hydrogen is actually at, on the right-hand side. So this is where you're going to break your compound, okay? So let me just rewrite this. So we have C2H5CO2H, and the break is right here, okay? So I have one whole thing of this and one H. Use those to crisscross back up, right? Now this one is going to be a little bit weird because the H's are usually in the front. In this case, the H is telling me that it's a negative one, right? And this one tells me that it's a positive one. So I have C2H5, CO2 being a plus one, and the H being a minus one. But this one is also a trick. The H is in group one. It's the positive one, right? So it looks like this one was just flipped. So we just have to correct it. Okay, so this is really the plus one and this is really the minus one. Okay, now let's group together. What's coming on over here? Remember a compound you need, um, you need, we'll say, one positive and one negative, right? So this guy, who is a plus two, isn't going to want to hook up with the negative two anymore. It's going to want to hook up with the other one. And in this case, it's going to want to be this one, right? Positives go with the negatives, and then the negatives go with the positives, right? So there's my first compound. And then my second compound is this negative come in with this guy, the H plus. And those are your two new compounds. So let's see. We have CA being a two plus reacting with now C2H5CO2. And that was a minus one. And this is calcium, calcium propionate, which is this guy. So use those charges crisscross back down. The two comes down here telling me that I have two propionates and the one crisscrosses down telling me that I have one calcium. So I have two, you could call this a polyatomic, so I do need parentheses. So it would be CA parentheses C2H5CO2 2. Reacting with the other one. It's an H with a CO3. Positives go first, right? So H plus 1 coming in with the CO3 2 minus. Let's see. This one crisscrosses down telling me that I have 1 uh, carbonate. This 2 tells me that it breaks down into 2 H's. So I have H2 C, whoop, CO3. But now here is the thing. Guys, if you make H2CO3, this is very unstable. It would like to form into two other compounds. So we have to just memorize that, okay? So whenever you make H2CO3, this will always break down rapidly to form two products, water, H2O, and that's a liquid, and then carbon dioxide, CO2, which is a gas. If I took all of the elements here, it would equal to H2CO3. You see how I have two hydrogens? Two hydrogens. I got one carbon, I got one carbon, and I have three oxygens, one, two, three. So this is the important information. So I will not write it as H2CO3. That's just like a trigger for me to say, uh-oh, I know I automatically have to just put H2O, liquid, plus uh, CO2, gas. And maybe if I can, just like move this over, because I'm just running out of room, CO2, and that's a gas. And I think, I think maybe I can bring this all over 
just so that we're not running out of room here, just to kind of clean this up. Okay. Oof. So we made calcium propionate, which is this, water, and carbon dioxide. Now let's just make sure that we have it balanced, right? I have two, right? I have two of these guys, but on my reacted side, I only have one, right? You see how it's only one C2H5CO2? But here's my C2H5CO2, and I have two of them. So I got a balance. I can only add subscripts, right? So I, actually, I can only add coefficients. So what number will tell me that I can get two of these? Oh yeah, definitely a two, right? Let's see, anything else? I have two leftover hydrogens. That's not part of this five. So I got two leftover hydrogens. That's not part of this five. So that's cool. I have one calcium. I have one calcium. I got one carbon, right? One carbon, one carbon. And then I got the three oxygen, which is the one plus two, which is a total of three. So we're done, right? Write a balanced equation for the formation of calcium propionate. This is it from what they gave us. Um, do we have to add any states? I don't think so. It doesn't say anything in the uh, question that it was, you know, a solid or a liquid. So I wouldn't even worry about that. So if you don't want to write down, you know, plus liquid and gas, that's fine with me. But those are usually just standard. Oops, what happened to the two here? Okay, there we go. So guys, hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments if it did. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to, you know, you know, help us out. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, I really love helping you out and I hope I am. So if you want, I'll see you in the next video, okay? For more balancing, see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.